Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and now I'm answering question number 19 from this specimen paper of the pure, sorry, of the paper two, extended Cambridge. Um, this is the new syllabus from 2025, and this paper two has no calculator, no calculator allowed, but non-calculator paper. And here we've got one of the new topics in the new syllabus which is about thirds. Okay, so the third is something which is basically underneath the square root. So part A of this question is asking us to simplify these thirds. Now when you simplify thirds, you basically have to, from the number under the square root, you must remove any perfect square number from it. Okay, so if we look at the number 32, we've got to take out basically the highest perfect square from that number. So it's a very good idea for us to know what the square numbers are without having to think about it too much. You don't have a calculator, so these things are going to be really important. So the square numbers are numbers like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, and so on. Those are the square numbers. Okay, we, no, we must know those square numbers. We must be able to see that's a square number and immediately be able to recognize it as a square number for us to be able to do these types of papers efficiently. Okay, because if we're going to spend spending a long time trying to figure out what a square number is, it's going to take up all our time and we will not be able to answer this, these questions in the given time. So it's something that you should really work on if you have problems with the square numbers. Okay, so now what we do is the way to work this out, we have to split up these numbers. So I'm going to take 32 and I'm going to split them up into two numbers. One of them has to be a perfect square and the biggest perfect square that we can find. So if we think about 32, we can say 32 times 1. Well, that's a square number, but that's not going to help us to break this down. And we have something times 2, which is 16 times 2. That's a square number. That looks like we've got the biggest one we can find. Okay, so we can stop there. We can carry on. 3 doesn't go into it. 4, 4, 8 to 32. That none of them is, well, 4 is a square number, but it's not the biggest square number, so it won't help us to simplify it in the quickest way. Um, 4, 8 to 32, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, that's it. So this is the one that we're looking for. This is the, the biggest square number in the number 32. Okay, so I can split up now 32 into two parts. I'm going to write the, the square number first, so 16 times 2. Okay, now I can write it as this product. Plus, and then for 98, I've got to think of how I can split 98 up into two numbers. So I have 98 times 1. I have um, times 2. If you're not sure, we can take 98. I know it's divisible by 2 because it ends in an even number. 2 goes into 9 four times, remainder one, two goes into 18, nine times, 49 is a square number, it's seven squared. So 49 times two, okay, that is gonna be, of course, the biggest square number, all right, that you can find there. So that is going to be what we write 98 as, 49 times two, always write the square number first when you split it up like this. Now we're gonna use one of the laws of thirds, which is similar to the laws of indices, basically, but when you have two numbers, a product of two numbers under the square root sign, you can write them as separate products under their own square root sign. So the square root of AB is the same as the square root of A times the square root of B. So I can write this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 49 times the square root of 2. So I have the square root of 16 is going to be 4. So you have 4 root 2 plus, and the square root of 49 is 7, 7 root 2. Now, one of the things that a lot of people get confused with they say, oh, take the square root of 16, you get plus or minus 4. No, the square root sign by itself, what this means here, when it's given in the question already, all right, it's already, we didn't put it in the question, it's already given to us in the question, it means the positive square root of 32, that's what it means. If they wanted to us to consider both of them, they would have this in the question like that, okay, plus or minus. If they want to consider the negative square root only, they would put a minus in front of it, means the negative square root, okay. So we have to understand that, very, very important. We don't put plus or minus here because this means the positive square root of 32 and that's going to be 4 times root 2. Okay, 
Now, if you had a question like x squared equals 16, and you want to solve for this, then that's when, when you put the square root sign yourself in the question. I said, okay, x squared equals 16. So x could either be the positive square root of 16 or the negative square root of 16. So x should either be plus or minus 4. Because when I put 4 in here, that gives me 16. When I put minus 4 here, it also gives me 16. Because minus 4 all squared is 16. So when we put the square root sign ourselves in the question, when we're solving the equation, that's when we put the plus or minus. If the square root sign is already there in the question, we don't put plus or minus at the end. It's a very, very important point. Okay, even in AS and A2, a lot of students get mixed up with that. It's very important for us to understand that. Now, we haven't quite finished yet because here we can simplify this. You have 4 root 2s plus 7 root 2s. So you have 4 of something plus 7 of the same thing. It's like 4x plus 7x. That's going to give us 11 root 2s. Okay, so now we fully simplified it. So the answer is 11 times the square root of 2. Okay, that's the answer to that question. Now, unfortunately, because we can't use the calculator, we're not able to check the answer using the calculator like we would be in a non-calculated exam. But that's why it's important for you to show your steps. So always split the numbers up into two parts. The first part, write the biggest perfect square number you can find. And the second um, uh, second part, uh, you know, uh, the non-square. Okay. Now if we put 8 times 4, we would have had a, a slight problem. We would have had 4 times 8 and we would have had root 4 times root 8. That would be 2 times root 8. But then this can also be simplified more because 4 is in here. So then you have to say 2 times root 4 times root 2. So 2 times 2, you'll end up with 4 root 2, which is the same thing that we got there in the end anyway. It just takes a lot longer. So it's always best to find the biggest perfect square that you can find um, when you're dealing with that. Okay, so that's part A, which is to do with simplifying numbers in third form. Now part B is kind of, kind of similar. But here it's asking us to rationalize the denominator. Now, a number that's written as a square root of a non-square, like root 2, that's called a number that's irrational because you cannot write root 2 as a fraction with exact values of the numerator, integer values of the numerator and denominator in the simplest form. So it's called irrational. So the rational numbers are like pi, root 2, root 3, the roots of non-square numbers. So the denominator here of this fraction is not rational it's irrational they want us to make it rational they want us to rationalize the denominator so we have to take this fraction one over the square root of two plus one and we have to change it such that it's rationalized that the denominator is rationalized the numerator doesn't have to be rationalized but the denominator does okay but its value must be the same as the original function uh, fraction that has to be equal to the, f the fraction just like when we take for example the fraction of half and we want to rewrite it with a new denominator, for example, 6. We multiply the top by 3, we multiply the bottom by 3 as well. Multiply top and bottom by the same number, then this fraction is the same value as that, but it's, you know, different in the way it looks. But its value is the same. So here we want to rewrite this as a fraction equivalent to this fraction, but with a denominator that's rational. Now, if the question said, if the question was, for example, 2 over root 2, and they say rationalize the denominator, okay, then what we would have done is we would have, well, let's, let's just make it something a bit different, 1 over root 2. They say rationalize the denominator. We would multiply the denominator by root 2. Why? We multiply it by the same thing. Why? Because that's what's going to make this become, without the square root, root 2 times root 2 is basically 2. Okay, it's like root 2 squared. And then... Because I multiply the denominator by root 2, I must also multiply the numerator by root 2 as well. So I end up with root 2 divided by 2. And that's now rationalized the denominator. So we started off with 1 over root 2. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, that number which causes the denominator to become rational. And we end up with a fraction which has the same value. Now, when you have something like root 2 plus 1, multiplying by just root 2 won't help. What we have to do is you have to think a bit about like the difference of squares. So if I multiply this by the same numbers inside the bracket, but with the opposite sign between them, it's going to be like a difference of squares. And the middle term, when you expand this, will become zero. And when you expand this, the middle term will be the term which has the square roots in it. But when I multiply the denominator by root 2 over minus 1, I must multiply the numerator by root 2 minus 1 as well. 
So I end up with the numerator being root 2 minus 1. And the denominator, if you expand this, you square the first term. You're going to have root 2 squared, which is 2. And then the middle term will become 0. And you're going to have 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. So you're left with root 2 minus 1 over 1, which is root 2 minus 1. We have rationalized the denominator, it became 1. Okay, so there's the answer that's like, sometimes they'll say simplify. Simplifying is the same thing because when you want to simplify a fraction and write it in the simplest form, it should be without any square root in the denominator. Okay, now um, a little side point now. Um, I'll just show you how what happens when you actually expand it physically, you know, every term. You have root 2 times minus, root times root times root 2. And you have minus 1 times root 2. And you have plus 1 times root 2. Then you have minus 1. So you can see that minus 1 root 2, plus 1 root 2, they disappear. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. That's what it becomes the denominator. Okay, just to show you how, how that actually works. All right, so you, you see something like this. You can just write down the square of these two multiplied together and take away this, the, these two multiplied together. So these two multiplied together, take away those two multiplied together, basically. That's it. So there's the answer for question part B. Um, and rationalizing the denominator these, these are like little examples of things which are like side points okay but that's how you deal with the rationalized denominator you multiply the denominator by the thing that gets rid of the square root if it's just one square root on its own you multiply it by that same square root if it's a conjugate if it's a number made up of a rational and a, um, a rational and an irrational part like this you multiply it by the thing which the same same numbers but the opposite sign between them Okay, so that concludes question number 19 from this paper, um, which is all about the new topic, which is SIRDS, okay, and uh, it's something which is kind of related to indices, okay, in, in a way. So um, it will be, I'll put, a separate, I'll put a separate playlist just for SIRDS, okay. So you'll see that the other questions from this paper are saved in a, the playlist for this specimen paper. Um, you know this you'll find that over here this question will also be saved in the playlist which is dealing with thirds from the new syllabus um, it's not really in the old syllabus at all so I'll just put here a link to how to subscribe to my channel and the top here um, how to navigate my channel to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon